Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, we're going to attempt to fix a long time issue that we've had with the 15 Ford Fiesta SE. And that is going to be the Blendor Actuator. So we've had the car for a little over three years now. It l actually just turned over 40,000 miles not too long ago. Um, so we've had the car for three years. When we bought the car, this was already an existent issue, and the car was still under warranty when we bought it, so it was replaced already. So technically, um, this is the third time that, to my knowledge, the third time that we are going to be replacing this actuator. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what it is about these, these uh, actuators that over time, when you want to put the blend door, the for the circulation and stuff, you know, the air direction into a certain mode, uh, it almost sounds like the actuator is like stripping on the inside. It clicks like it's slipping a gear or something. It's very, very weird. Um, and especially the fact that the actuator in this car, like I said, right now has already been replaced and now it has to be replaced again. So we'll turn the ignition over and I will show you what it's doing in case you're wondering so we put that on there um, turn that down there so as you can hear it's already on the front mode door it's switching over now there it is So at first I thought it was the recirc door, but it's not. The recirc door is functioning properly. So if I want to switch it to coming out the front and the floor, you can kind of hear it's not doing anything. It switched over. Put it on the windshield. It's switching over. It's not doing anything. That sounds good. If I want the floor and the windshield, switched over it's not doing anything if I want just the floor switched over not doing anything I'm gonna put it back on the front just by itself and that's where the problem lies so I don't know what it is about these particular actuators but that is what it does, so today we're going to try to get to the bottom of it. Um, I did I did buy this, uh, it was over a month ago, I wanted to do it sooner, but the weather is actually pretty decent today. We're going to try to do this today. If I can get it out of the box, I'd like to show you what it looks like. This is it. Just a little box with a gear on the end of it that plugs into the uh, the blend door and as you're switching modes this little motor turns to the appropriate position but something about it is causing these things to fail might try to open the old one up if we can get it out properly it's not necessarily the easiest task but I think we should be able to get it done now when I was at school, I tried to look on our, uh, what do we use, ShopKey. We have ShopKey at the school. It's an it's a online subscription, basically just one large service manual for any car, make, model, year, whatever. But um, the only one that I could find on ShopKey at school was replacing the, um, the recycling door actuator, which if you're doing that, it's actually pretty easy to get to I could show you guys real quick just so that way you guys kind of know but what you have to do to get to the recirculation one is you have to open the glove box but you have to push in the sides of the glove box see and the glove box falls down then from there oh there's the fuse block right there but right there that's gonna be the recirculation door actuator 
So if I actually put the key back on, so right now the recycling door is positioned with the outside air coming in. So if you hit the recirc button, see how that door just closed in there? So now it's sucking air through here. Ain't that cool? Outside. See the door closing it off so it's sucking in air from outside, inside. And you can hear the change in the air, how the air is being sucked in through there. So, so that actuator there is actually a lot easier to get to than it is than what we're going to need to do. So as I was saying, I couldn't really find any proper instructions on how to get to this actuator through the shop key. So since I work at a Ford dealership, you know, I asked um, one of the technicians who actually replaced this before, and uh, he said all he really does is he goes through the bottom of the steering column to get to that part. Now this, this is an airbag, so we just did air, we just did airbag work in the previous vlog, um, but we're not going to do anything with this airbag. We should not have to. Uh, what he said, what he does, and from what I could find elsewhere online, is just remove the cover to the steering column. Sorry for all of the, you guys see the dust and the cat hair and stuff. Springtime's around the corner, so detail season is upon us. But, um, so what we're going to do is we're, we're going to work around the airbag. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. I did see another video on it. We've got to take the cover off. Once this whole cover's down, we should be able to get to it and see it better. Like I said, right now, with everything here, we really can't see much. If we tried to go up this way, it could be a possibility, but let me see. What's this? Another plastic piece there. I do not think we can get to it from this angle. I think we I think we have to go the opposite, you know, through through the column because of the angle that it's at. It's more, I think, this way or something. I'm not sure. Plus, I got, I got to get a light in there, too. Also, um, you know, the three years that we've had this car, this is the first thing that I, myself, have to replace on this car. That's not bad. And it's, like I said, I think it was like $25. A little $25 part. So, let's get tools. We'll take the column plastic off. And hopefully that's not going to be too bad. Um, I know sometimes steering column plastic's a pain to deal with. But let me get the tools and we will start on this little venture. Okay, first things first. The start of the column removal is going to be, if you turn the wheel, there's a Torx bit screw there. And there's one there also. So we got to start off by re removing those two screws, and then there's a third one right there. Now once all three of those are out, we might, we have to separate the column uh, pieces. Obviously there's a top half, there's a bottom half, we have to split them and try to wiggle them out. Um, now what size bit does this consist of? That's a weird angle. T20, I think. I think it's a T20. Let me get it on the actual screwdriver. We'll see. Yep, T20. Oh, they're not very long at all. Okay, there's one. Just set that there. Go to the other side. Now 
that side. Okay, so that's our top. We don't need that running anymore. Okay, and now we'll go to the bottom. This one right here. Okay, that's that. There we go. Kind of grabbed it from the bottom. See how the top piece popped out, so that's good. Oh, there we go. Oh, well, I didn't necessarily want to take it off, but... <laughs> All right, so that's off. Now we got to get the bottom piece off. Okay, it just kind of fell from there. Oh, okay, that was, that was not too bad. Also keep in mind, your airbag. <laughs> We're not messing with the airbags today, um, but be mindful of that. Watch anything with a yellow connector, because chances are the yellow connector is your airbag. All right, so that opens up a little bit of room. Now we just, I need a light. So it is. I know this is kind of crappy angle. Come on, phone. Just saw it. Right there. That little box right there with that one screw. That's it right there. The plug it has a red tab on it. You can see the red right there. So that's it. It really isn't that far in there, but yeah, getting the column apart does make it a little bit easier to see and get to. So. As far as taking the screws out, you're going to probably want to use a really small ratchet with the proper, um, again, it's a T20 Torx, from my understanding. But it's right there. There's a, there's a, a wiring loom right in front of it for some reason. So it's going to be interesting to try to work around and get out. Um, Plus, unplugging it from the back right there. So, I'm, I'm not going to be able to document that, but that's it. So, there's two screws holding it on. Um, let's see. It's going to go in like this. From the looks of it. <laughs> Alright, so I lost a little bit of daylight. Had to make a, a run to uh, the hardware store. We're going to use this to try to get in there. Put this on our, our socket. Again, should be T20 in there. So let me try to get it out. So I'm not gonna lie, guys, this sucks. <laughs> I'm on the front one. I just, I finally got the back screw out. Working on the front one. The back one is a real pain to get to. You can try to go underneath the dashboard but you're still not gonna be able to really get to it. The problem is, you can only use one hand at a time, so it most certainly helps when you have something that ratchets like this. She's getting there. See, now I need two hands or I can try to twist it with my fingers. Twist the... There's one, that's the bottom one there. This one here, she's getting there. Oh, there we go. All right, they should be the same. They're the same. All right, so now, now we got to get the connector out of it, and uh, you can see it's not really all that bad to do. It's just trying to get to it. All the wiring harness are in the way. Somebody, whoever fixed this last time, I think broke on this wiring harness. See that plastic there? I think that's supposed to hold that that um, whole harness into that little hole right there. And it's not being held in there. So I think somebody broke it. What happens if we pull this thing out? Pull it out. Okay, so we got it out. Let's see if we can get the connector out. I can't see the connector. 
set the tab. Nope. Oh. Oh. Red lock. Yeah, it's a red lock. So the red lock has to be undone, but I can't find the other squeeze tab or something. All right, and it's out. Yep. And that was uh, the clip. There's the connector there. Uh, the um, uh, the red lock broke somewhere. It flung off into the bottom of the dash. I don't know if I can retrieve it somehow or if it's going to end up on the floor. But when I was trying to pull it off, it snapped right off. So it's down in there somewhere. Uh, so there, there's the, where well you can see the gear go into the the little blend door assembly. So that's it. So now I'm going to take a few minutes to try to find that little red cap or that red lock. And then we'll just fish the, the new one up there and try to tighten the bolts or the screws. And that should be it. All right, so the new one's in place. Fun fact, there's a little tab there that one of those, um, those holes are for on the new actuator. So uh, that kind of holds it there. Got our connector in. I did find my little red lock. So we got that plugged in. Um, the, um, the teeth on there, they do have to go on a certain way. This motor, you can see, the old one, maybe, it's too bright. You can kind of see there's a flat spot there. So there was actually a flat spot in the Blendor assembly. So these teeth have to match perfectly. Uh, when I took this one out, this cog was not lined up with the new one. And uh, I'm hoping that didn't really make too much of a difference. So I got, you know, I had to rotate the, the, um, the new actuator to try to line the holes up or the teeth up with the blend door assembly. Uh, and then once it lined up, it pushed in and then I rotated it to match, you know, where the, um, that, the little peg is. So it's in there. I don't have the screws in yet. I am going to try it real quick though, uh, with it sitting as is, because I do want to make sure that it's going to be okay before, you know, so you can see the gear turning. We'll turn this on. And it's on the front dash right now. Make sure that's plugged in or sitting in there so it's not gonna go anywhere. All right, so I feel the air. Let's go to the floor. It's moving the floor. Go to the dashboard. So far, so good. Now I'm just going to go back to the dash. I think we're good. <laughs> seems to be, uh, seems good. Let me go just to the floor. Okay, and then back to the dash. All right, she's good. So now we gotta fight with the two screws, get them in there, button it up, and seems to be like, uh, seems to be like everything's good. All right guys, that's it. Both of those screws are in. When you tighten them down, don't over tighten them. I mean, they're all, it's only being, put into plastic so it'll start to round out we know it works no more clicking oh, now we get to put the steering column back together so we'll start off with the bottom piece oh, there it goes steering columns are 
one of the worst things to deal with. Actually, that snapped on pretty good. <laughs> we'll lower it. If it doesn't fall off or not. There. All right, so I think I got it in the little boot thing. I think it was like that. I don't think it sealed up 100%, but I don't know. I can't get it to maybe like that. Yeah, I guess it looks a little original. Check the other side. But I had to push that down in there. So the cut top's on. Now you just gotta put your three bolts in. I got the bottom one kind of sitting there. So tighten this one up here. That's it. Plastic piece there, just kind of sticking out. So. I don't know. You know, you don't really see that backside, but you want to try to get it to looking as original as possible. So I think that's it. Everything lined up all right. I think it's okay. So go back to the floor real quick. to the windshield and now we'll have it come out the dash oops there we go no clicking that's a success so I figured before I put everything away and I discard this old actuator let's open it up and see if we can see like any damage or anything um we just need like a flathead screwdriver to pry around the edges to open it so let me go ahead and get it opened i just ended up breaking all the tabs because it's going in the trash anyway so let's see uh, oh there's a hidden one back here So that's the inside. Hmm. They ain't gonna turn because the motor's not the motor's not running. But something in here causes it to click and I don't know. Like I said, it's kinda hard to see everything. Oh, we can. Fun. Here's the worm drive there from the motor. That turns this gear here. Circuit board. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. There it is. I bet that's it. There's a tooth. Looks like it's completely ground down or broke somewhere. So when it was in that position, that's where it was slipping right there. On the actual uh, shaft to the door. Man, what is it about these that do that? Huh. And then that's... This is the sensor, the position sensor here also. So you can see those prongs there. So when this is sitting at a certain position for the desired blend mode, those uh, prongs here, those report back to the module in the car to say that it's actually at that position or not. So, But that's, that's our dead spot right there. That's the reason why it was clicking. That sucks. The rest of it's probably, you know, fairly good the motors probably probably still use the motor for something but yep that's that so at least at least we kind of know 
what was doing it. Is this the gear? Hold on a second. Oh, there it is. That's the tooth. <laughs> it was stuck in the grease. Yep. There it is. That's that's the entire that's that entire spline from that piece there. Actually, looking at one of the other gears also on here, this other gear here, um, it's hard to tell, but it's it also has a broken spot in it. So two of the gears, yeah, you can kind of see it there on the edge. So two of the gears in here have flat spots on them. All right, guys, so that's it. So if you were looking to change your actuator, your blender actuator on your Ford Fiesta, probably any model, to be honest with you, any model range for the U.S., they really didn't change a whole lot. So what, 2011 to 2019, I think? That's the model range. This one in particular was a 15 with the automatic single zone climate controls. I'm sure if you don't have the automatic climate controls, it's probably the same exact method. It's probably in the same exact spot. But that is, that's how you do that. It kind of sucked. It's a simple job. You just uh, two screws, the wiring connector, and you pull it back out. Put the new one in, hook up the connector, and put the two screws in, and you're good to go. But the p position where it's at on this particular car, it, it kind of sucks to get up in there. Um, I'm sure the proper method is probably to remove that knee airbag. But like I said, I couldn't find, at school, I couldn't find the actual method. And the guys in the actual Ford shop said they just work around it. I don't know. But guys, I'm going to call it a day. Clean this stuff up. It's good to go. We'll see how long it takes before it starts clicking again. But it's working fine now. I'm happy with it. And that's it. If you guys enjoyed this, thought it was knowledgeable, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Check out teespring.com slash doors slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. That's all I've got for today. I will see you guys next time. Thank you again so much for watching. Take care.